Hey guys, um, hang on as I try to get this on my uh, stand. I was trying to figure out the scheduling part of um, of YouTube. I guess I just don't have it down yet. Um, so I'm actually live earlier than I thought it would be, but that's fine. Um, we'll just let me get my iPad set up so I can see everyone that pops in, if anyone pops in. Let's see here. All right, so um, if you see the uh, the title for today, I'm actually going to be doing some Thanksgiving type cards. And I asked on my Instagram what people would like to see. And my friend Daniel said, um, do a, do a uh, Thanksgiving centerpiece card. So we'll see what we can do today for Thanksgiving and fall type cards. Hi, Ivalice. Is it Ivalice? Is that how you say it? Um, thanks for joining. So I have some cards here of different fall Thanksgiving themed cards that I have done in the past. Okay, good. I said it right. <laughs> I went, I'm always afraid I'm going to mispronounce someone's name. Um, anyway, so I have some cards here of some Thanksgiving things I've done in the past. Um, this was a stamp set from Buddhist Monroe this um, year. Actually, everything is from this year except for this card, this little image by the Greeting Farm. I just thought she was really cute, really fun. To I made a simple little card for that. So I just kind of wanted to put these out here and see if there's anything that you guys want to see me play with. Uh, do you want to do some leaves and some watercolor? Or should we color some little cute little images? I can pull out any of my stamps if you guys want to see something. And um, this one I have not posted yet online, but this is that Golden Gourd Embossing Powder from Brutus Monroe. And I've just colored it in with colored pencils. So I thought that was really just fun and kind of pretty. And um, yeah, just some fun things. So I'm going to pull out some of my, um, some of my fall, um, things and we'll see what we can make. So we've got some leaves here, which you always need for Thanksgiving. Just trying to go through all my things. I have my basket right next to me where I've got most of the stamps that I'm using, but I have also another bin that I have full of just different stamps that I can pull from when I need them. So this is kind of a spur of the moment type live. I didn't really go ahead and prepare anything. I just thought I would go and create with all of you. Thanks, Madonna. I'm glad you like them. I just really love to create and use all kinds of different stamps and do a little fall theme. So here's some coffee, coffee cups. Those could be kind of fall, fallish. Let's see what else we have here. Oh, do do. I really need to update <laughs> my organization skills in my craft room. I need to go through and just um, get them all in sleeves and label them and get a bin that they actually fit well into because I can go through here, but I still miss like so many of my stamp sets. Here's this one. Here's that one. Um, that was a Simon Says Stamp and Greeting Farm set. And that was actually for their stamp timber of last year, which was really fun. So, oh, I know what we could do. Where's my Concord? And this would make a really fun background too, wouldn't it? A pumpkin spice latte card? That actually found, sounds really fun. So maybe we'll do that. Should we do it with um, some of these little girls here? And then do some kind of um, fun little pumpkin spice latte. Who out there likes a pumpkin spice latte? I tried it once. It was okay. I can't say I was in love with it, but um, it was all right. I know some people are like in love with it and they just need to need to have it every, every season. So I think I'm going to stamp these girls out on some of this Not Your Mama cardstock from Brutus Row 
because I want to color them in with Copic. Well, not Copics. My style file markers. Hi, Lisa. Thanks for joining. So glad to see some people popping in here. I thought maybe I'd be crafting on my own today. <laughs> All right. So there's some really cute images here, and I'd love to go ahead and just color them. Do you guys want to see alcohol markers, or do you want to see watercolors? Because I could do either. Let me see if I have my watercolor papers here. I have them. Oop, I'm moving you guys around. I have some watercolor paper, and it fell behind. Here we go. Now you get to see all my surface inks. All right, here we go. I am just all over the place. You want to see alcohol markers? Okay, we'll do that. That's the easiest. You've never tried, oh, you've never tried pumpkin spice latte? Where are you from? Is it, I want to guess, but I'll get it wrong. So alcohol markers, okay. So the nice thing about the Brutus Monroe Detail Ink is it works with watercolor or alcohol markers. So even if you don't have like something in mind when you start out, uh, but you stamp out your Im images, you can use it with pretty much any kind of medium because it's permanent and it's not going to run. So I'm going to cut this down a little bit. And you guys, have you tried the Not Your Mama's cardstock yet from Brutus Monroe? It is. It is, I believe it's 130 pounds, but do you hear that? Do you hear how thick that is? So I love it with the alcohol markers because it will not bleed through to the other side. So even if you want to do like a one layer card with alcohol markers, um, you can because it's not going to bleed through. So I'm putting my little foam piece back here. Um, I had it out because I was working with rubber cling stamps. It is really thick. It's 130 pounds, and I, I just love it. It works great for card bases, but even if you don't want to use it for a card base and you just want to color on top of it, it's just absolutely perfect. So let's put our little images here. I want to put one of them here. And let's do, let's do the other girl right over here. We'll just stamp them both out while we're stamping. And since I want to use these, let's put some of the smaller images down as well. So there's a little coffee cup or hot chocolate. Here's a little mug and a little pumpkin. Let's do that. All right, and we'll go ahead and stamp those out. There we go. So I know I like to stamp it at least two or three times because while you have your Misty out, you might as well just stamp several times to make sure you have a really good impression. Push it down, let it soak into that paper, and we'll stamp again. So how is everybody's day going so far? Have you had a busy day? My kids are finally down for their nap. We, <laughs> we were out this morning. We got home a little bit later than usual, so... Um, they went down for their nap a little bit later, but that's okay. They were tired, so I'm hoping they have a nice long nap today. All right, so we're getting there. Okay, so I think this will probably be good. One more stamp, and then we can get coloring. There we go. See how cute those images are? I just, when I saw this last year on the Stamp Timber, I just had to have it have it because it was cute. Too cute. All right, I'm gonna move this aside. 
And then I'm just gonna hit this with my heat tool real quick. I just wanna make sure the images are dry so that when I'm coloring, it doesn't smear all over the place. So they are stamped and I'm hoping they're dry enough so we can get to coloring. I'm trying to make sure I'm watching my screen so that you guys can see. So here is my alcohol markers. I use the style file markers. I absolutely love them. You can buy them at Brutus Monroe. They are, um, I would say a fraction of the price uh, than Copics and they work really well. I'm pretty much a beginner when it comes to alcohol markers but these work fantastic. So let's let's start with something easy here. Let's do this little pumpkin. I'm gonna put yellow to begin with and then I'm gonna blend on um, the other colors and give it a nice red. So this is 154 canary yellow. And I'm not being too careful right, right now because it's just the first layer. And then let's go with a little bit of orange. So I like to put down my lightest color first and then kind of come in with my mid-tone and finish it off with my darkest color. And I'm going to kind of pretend the light is hitting it from the top. So I want it to be darker at the bottom and then kind of get lighter. So I'm just going to leave a little bit of that yellow peeking through on the top there. And then let's take a little of reddish brown. Let's see what that looks like down here at the bottom. So sometimes it looks a little bit weird at first when you're putting all these colors on, but as you kind of blend them together um, and start to blend them out, it really, they kind of, they come together. Trust me. Hi, you're new to my channel. Oh, thanks for stopping in, Eva. Um, I am kind of making like a fall sort of thank you card type thing, Thanksgiving. Um, and we picked uh, these, we picked these greeting farm in images because they were really cute. They have a brush nib and they have a chisel, chisel nib. So um, the chiseled side is really great if you're using it for, you know, really large surface. But yeah, these are brush. Yeah, it's fun to learn new things. Fun to kind of pop in and look at other people's channels and just see what, see what you can learn from them. Thank you for stopping by. I tried to kind of announce it and kind of um, schedule it, but apparently I need to figure out YouTube a little bit more because that didn't work. I accidentally just went live sooner than I had expected. So sorry guys, but it's all good, right? Let's see. The pins are awesome. Oh, like the, uh, the Copics, or not Copics, excuse me, style file markers. So I'm just trying to blend all of these colors together, going over with my different, different colors. And let's see, maybe we'll move on to one of the cups. All right, so one of my favorite fall colors is, um, burgundy or like a maroon and I don't have that in my colors I don't have one in in my markers so I think I'm going to show you how I've done this before and made sort of a burgundy type color so I'm taking a red 
and just, you know, coloring that on. And since these markers blend together, you can add other colors. And I'm going to now add some, I'm trying to remember how I did this before. I'm going to add some violet to it. So red and violet. And we'll see how that looks. Oh, yeah, you can get them on Amazon. Yeah, Amazon, and I know Brutus Monroe sells these as well. If you like the style file ones. They are much cheaper than um, the other ones, Copics. Um, like maybe, I would say maybe half the price. But they still work really well. And for a beginner like me, who I'm not sure if I want to go blow my budget on Copics, you know, these work really great. So I came in with a deeper red. I didn't like how um, purple it looked, but you can see how it's now kind of, hopefully you can see, I'll shine some more light on it. You can kind of see how those colors are now blending together and it's kind of making a maroon or a burgundy. And a really cool thing you can do also if you want to kind of make designs on your images is here is the colorless blender. Now it doesn't really, this is basically just alcohol, no color to it. And so um, you can kind of use it to blend, but more it more so pushes around your pigment. So anywhere you put it, it's kind of going to push away some of that color. So you can go in and add some texture. You can add some design with a colorless blender. If you kind of colored outside the lines, um, you can kind of push some of that color back in if you kind of push it this way. Because I did go outside the lines. <laughs> but um, it's really handy to kind of have one of these just kind of push that color back down. All right, so I have a kind of a maroonish little cup here. And let's see, let's add some cream color here to the top. And a little bit of darker yellow. Um, yes, these are refillable and uh, you can go to the style file um, website, I believe. I don't know if Brutus Monroe sells the refills. I know they sell extra nibs um, and the tweezers that you can use to pull it out. Um, I don't think they sell the actual refills, though. But they are refillable. So definitely, yes. All right, so let's go ahead and color one of our girls. Let's see. So I'll just warn you all, I am kind of a slow colorer when it comes to these kind of things but um we'll we'll just take our time and have fun so let me go ahead and start with maybe her face just kind of color that in so i'm using a pastel peach which is a really light color that you can use for lighter skin just going to go ahead and get a layer of this down I don't think my ink was completely dry, but that's all right. And let me just color in her little legs here. She's wearing a cute little skirt, so. There we go. All right, and now I don't have like a full set of flesh tone. I only have like several of them. So a lot of times for my shading on lighter skin, I use a rose beige, which is just kind of a darker sort of pink. And I like to do it kind of under the hair um, where it might be darker and maybe like on the side here, maybe her neck and it looks kind of weird right now, but we're going to blend it out again with some more of that, um, pastel peach. So we're going to put another layer on here. So, um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with alcohol markers, but um, the alcohol is what helps them to blend together. And so, um, 
when you have lighter colors, they actually have more alcohol in them. And if you have darker colors, you have more of the pigment and less of the alcohol, if I understand it correctly. So lighter colors are actually going to help blend it out better. So as you, so I, I kind of like to put my darker ones on and then go in with my lighter ones and just kind of pull that color out with my lighter alcohol markers. So you can see how it's already sort of blending together. It's not looking quite as uh, weird as it did in the beginning. Okay, so we're just gonna go with simple, simple coloring today, nothing too fancy. Um, so I've got that done. And let's see here, how about, how about we try to give her sort of a denim kind of skirt? Yeah, they do kind of take, um, Madonna, they do kind of take a little bit of practice. When I first got them, I thought I was doing it wrong because everything I colored looked horrible. I'm like, they make it look so easy when you're watching on YouTube, but um, it, it takes a little bit of practice. And so that's why I was really hesitant to go out and spend big bucks on expensive brands. And so when I saw Brutus Monroe had these um, as an option and they weren't as pricey, I kind of jumped on them. I got a nice little basic set and I'm really glad I did. And I kind of, I am getting the itch now to go order some more. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, so I might be doing that in the future. So let's see, you know what guys, I, can you see it's getting a little fuzzy around the edges here? I don't know why all of my, maybe it's cause my ink wasn't um, dry enough. Maybe that's why it's bleeding out today. Not sure, but um, we'll just kind of keep plucking along and see what we can do. Let's see. How about a, what kind of shirt should we give her? Thanks, Eva. I really love, I love these, um, love these little images. Really cute. So for her shirt, maybe like a green or yellow, something really, how about maybe a, maybe some more of that red. Let's do some red. Something really fallish. I'm, I'm in the mood for the fall with our Thanksgiving sort of fall theme going on here. So we'll do some red. Hopefully it doesn't uh, bleed too much. <laughs> and then we'll do a little bit of purple. Try to see if we can make some more of that sort of burgundy color. I'm just kind of blend those together. But you know, dark purple is a good fall color too, right? Because I've been using that with a lot of my stamps um, to kind of create like fall palette. So I like the purple as well. Let's see. And how about we'll give her like a nice sort of cream yellow scarf. Let's do that. So I'm going to start with a light cream color. And I'm going to put some yellow over it. Nope, that's the chisel side. Kind of flicking it in from the ends. Actually, if we're really worried about shading, the scarf would be darker in this area. But I don't always worry about the shading. Um, I just color until I think it looks good because if I worried too much about the shading, I would never get anything colored and I would never get anything done because I need more practice in that area. So <laughs> can't always just worry about all of those things. It's fun just to sit and create. Now let's just kind of start blending that out. And why don't we give her some little, some little yellow shoes to match. So we'll do some of this yellow down here. Cute, cute, cute. A 
a little bit of shading on the sides. And I just noticed I missed her little arm over here. So now I have to remember, I think I used the light violet and um, the dark red. Oh, yeah, I used these two, I believe. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to make that the same color as her shirt, which the red on its own doesn't look too bad either. But it is kind of bright, so I'm kind of trying to tone down the colors. Make it more of a muted fall type thing. And I love that purple shirt with the yellow scarf. All right, so let's do the coffee cup. Let's just get that one done, and then we'll move on to the hair, because the hair is my favorite. <laughs> my favorite to color. It's really fun to do hair. So let's give her a little bit of shading yeah that's always my that was my worry too um buying alcohol markers because it is it is an investment I mean they're not cheap if you want to buy a set or if you want a lot of colors um so that was my worry as well getting some but once you I mean I, everyone learns differently but for me it's really helpful to watch videos of other people coloring um, so I watched a lot of videos um, and a lot of just time just coloring and practicing will really help. But I, I went with the style file markers because they were a, a good price as far as alcohol markers go. And it didn't seem like, you know, a really um, scary <laughs> purchase that you know if i went and bought a set of copics it would have been so i i still love them though so i think i'll probably stick with this brand at least for now not really worry about copics because these pretty much do what i want them to do so i'm just kind of getting some shading going here on this coffee cup and i think that's good so now we can go on to the hair and I'll show you what I like to do. I actually really love coloring sort of reddish hair now because my son is a redhead and I think it's absolutely adorable. So I wanna pick out some colors here for red. So I'm kinda of trying to remember what I use. I like to do cream first because that is a lighter color. It's got brownish kind of a yellowish brown tint to it and I like to start where your hair would be darkest so kind of down here kind of along your part and then down here and just think about maybe the light hitting it here and here and then just kind of go from those areas and then kind of flick out so I'm kind of make, making little flicks here making it kind of look like strands of hair and I'm actually leaving a little line here I'm leaving it a little bit white. I'm not putting any color down. And I might come back in and fill it in, but it's gonna help create a highlight in her hair. So we'll go ahead and do this side. And I actually find some, some of these smaller areas easier because it's not as much surface to have to try to color. And then I'm gonna come back down here where it's darker. And I am going to kind of fill all this in because it would all be shaded. I'm just going to kind of flick, flick up. Kind of try to curve it around a little bit. There we go. So I'm, I'm going to start building on this color. There we go. So that's kind of like my first color, my first layer. And I'm gonna go ahead with now, I think 810, which is a brick brown. And then just go right where I um, went before, but not, and then just kind of flick it out. And um, I like to do small layers so that I can always come back in later and add more, um, but just kind of get it started. So this girl is going to have more of an auburn, sort of a reddish brown kind of hair. And 
And it does kind of just take time of coloring, trying to get it, get it how you want it. I'm not going to say get it right because I don't think there's really a right or way, wrong way. Um, it's just what you enjoy and what you want it to look like. Okay, and now I'm going to go in with my darkest shade, and this is Natural Oak. So it's a darker reddish brown. And I'm just going to put a little bit right on her part. right where it would be darkest. And this one really blends in really well with that last color I just did. So it's looking a little funky with all of this, um, uh, with all these colors going on, but we're gonna keep blending it out. Yeah, there. I mean, it's really relaxing just to sit in, sit in color, I agree. Something therapeutic about it. All right, so I'm going to come back in with my medium tone and just kind of keep adding, sort of blending, blending it out. I think I want to bring it up a little bit more. Get some more color in there. And always just trying to use that flicking motion. So I'm really not worried about it looking streaky or anything because, I mean, it's supposed to be hair, so it's not supposed to look completely perfect. Now I'm just kind of coming back over all of these things and just um, sort of blending it out a little bit more. So I am filling in that sort of highlighted spot. And you can see how it kind of just... Um, helps blend it out and sort of tones down some of this brown here. Blend it in down here as well. All right, and then I'm going to add a little bit more dark, some of the darkest shade. Kind of flick that out a little bit. And then I'll probably go over it one more time with the medium tone. So that's really the um, the color you're mostly going to see. Okay. And then I think one more layer with this medium tone and I think that might be good. Ta-da! So there's our little fall fall girl. She's got some cute little styling clothes going on. Sort of a reddish brown hair. I'm gonna go ahead and cut her out. Thanks, Lisa. I really love these images. I, I still love them after buying them a year ago, but when I see a stamp set that I love, I usually buy it. Um, I like to kind of keep in mind that I want to buy things that I'm going to use and that I'm going to love. So I wait till the stamp sets come along that I really love and then I go buy them. I don't have a huge craft room. Actually, you guys, my craft room is my bedroom <laughs> after moving. It used to be my laundry room and I think I still have a... Um, craft room tour of my laundry room um, on my YouTube channel somewhere. Uh, so if you want to know what my laundry room craft room looked like, uh, you could go find that. I haven't done a craft room tour yet of my new craft room, 
because it's my bedroom. So I'd be like, hey, look at this corner over here. It's a desk and a shelf and that's my craft room. So, um, but my husband is, uh, really loves doing woodworking. So I am kind of thinking about a desk or craft storage that I want him to build for me. Um, it'll just kind of take a while because he's a busy guy with working and everything. He doesn't get all the free time that he would like. So thank you, Madonna. I, um, I'm still a beginner with the alcohol markers. I try to make it sound like I know what I'm doing, but I kind of don't. I kind of just wing it. But I found that practice and just watching YouTube videos really helps. And if you, if I'm sure you guys are familiar with Sandy Alnock, she is an amazing Copic artist. So if you haven't watched her already, just go watch her because she's got a lot of great tips. I think she's even got like an online class, an online Copic class, if I'm not mistaken. But she's amazing. All right, so we have our little girl here cut out. Why don't we cut out this little cup too? Just because we can cut off that border that sort of leaked. Just trim it away. There we go. Cute, cute. Now if you wanted to give her a nice really big cup, you could just kind of tape that on over her little cup there. Um, that would be cute. Let's see. All right. So what else do we want to do? I really love this little leaf here. Um, I have a video coming up showing you how you can build your own wreath, like your fall wreath with just a few, um, a few colors and a few leaf stamps. But should we do that here today? The little fall wreath trying to find some cardstock that I can use. So I don't want to lose my little leaf here. Let me cut this down to be fitting on a card front, a little scrap paper. So first of all, we have to trim this down so it's straight. Then I'm going to trim it to four inches by five and a quarter. So that takes a quarter off of each side. That would normally um, be an A2 size card. So I have a little idea. I mean, we can do a little stamped wreath or we could do this really cool plaid background. Do you think she would look up good on plaid? Or should we do a little wreath behind her? What do you guys think? I'm going to grab some of my stamps out of my Misty before I forget about them and like put them away and then later on, you know, be totally worried that I lost all these stamps because I can't remember where they are. Do, do any of you do that? Do you like lose things that aren't really lost, like just leave stamps in your Misty or something or lose your Misty magnets? put this back on our sheet. Hopefully this light isn't in your way. It's blinding you guys. There we go. All right. All the time. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. I'm not the only one. <laughs> so, oh, I have an idea. I don't know how that would look though. Maybe we should... Let's just do a simple fall wreath. Oh, plaid? Let's do plaid. I love the plaid. So, what color should we do our plaid? Should we do like the buffalo check that's just like black and white? Or should we do some, let's see, what is she wearing? She's got some yellow. We could do like a blue or a purple. Let me get this in here. Now the thing about these um, thing about these background stamps, if you've already cut your card down to size, you can't really put the magnet on it because it's not gonna 
you know, stamp with your magnets there. So I kind of like to just tape down my paper to my um, misty paper and I go over it with my fingers just so it's not incredibly sticky. Just so it sticks just enough that it's not moving around when you're stamping because um, you are going to have to stamp your stamp, your background stamp several times. Because it's such a big detailed stamp. So I'm going to actually put my, oh, put my magnets over to this side here since I'm not using them. And I'm going to put my plaid down. Sorry guys, YouTube kicked me off again. Like I said, it happens at least once or twice with every stream. YouTube kicks me off. Don't know why. So I hope... You guys weren't gone for too long. Let me see if I can get this straightened out again. How's that look? Is it good? Are we back? Three. I'm trying to do this without kicking you guys off. Okay. So let's ink up our stamp here and let's see. Picking up my whole paper here. Hopefully I can get that back in the right spot. Let's see, what should we do? How about, would she look good? What kind of colors do I have? Maybe we should do some plum and then add some gold. Add some gold stripes. Let's just see what the plum looks like. If it doesn't look good, we can always stamp out another background. Just ink this background stamp. And stamp it out. And we'll see what that plum looks like. Oh no. I actually really like that. Now I hope I can get this back in the right spot. I should have left my magnets there to hold down the rest of the paper. Let's see if I can do that this time. There we go. So I hope I don't lose any of you guys when my camera went out. If you're still there, give me a wave or something so I know where you are. <laughs> or uh, don't forget to thumbs up this video. All right, let's stamp this out again and just put another layer of ink on there. Hey, Lisa, glad you're still here. I was hoping I didn't lose everybody. All right, hopefully that's lined up where it should be. It looks pretty good, but we'll see. All right, so I'm kind of actually liking it, not completely stamped. Um, hey, Madonna, thanks. I'm glad you're still here. Um, I kind of like that there's a few spots that aren't perfectly stamped. So I think I'm gonna go with that and just leave it like this. So I'm going to hit it with my heat tool and just dry that ink. And then we can go ahead and stamp some more out. Because this, this background stamp comes with some smaller stripes that you can layer on there. Hi, Lisa. Thanks for popping in. There's two Lisas with us today. Hey, Heidi. Hi, Karen. Karen, we colored with, um, we colored Copics, not Copics, excuse me, 
style file markers. I always say Copics because I'm thinking of alcohol markers, but it's style file. So I think that purple looks really cute, don't you? Anyway, so we want to stamp out the, um, the stripes now. And I don't know, but every time I stamp out the stripes, I just think it needs to be embossed. So I kind of want to do um, gold embossing. Um, Heidi, this plaid is a Concord and Ninth background. So it's got the, uh, the plaid background and then it's got the stripes. So that's Concord and Ninth. And then our little girl here, she is the greeting farm. She was, um, a stamp timber special from last year on Simon Says Stamp. So we're just kind of playing with a few fun, fun stamp sets here today. So I'm going to grab my background stamp out of my Misty. So I can then layer this this one in and we'll stamp out some of those smaller lines. Now, do you guys want to see this embossed? Now I can use my magnets now this time. Do you want to see these little lines embossed or should I just stamp them out in a different color? Because I feel like some reddish brown or gold. You know what? I just really like gold. Maybe we should just stamp and emboss it in gold. <laughs> Let's see. All right, so if we're gonna emboss, maybe we'll just take our little embossing bag and rub that on there. Make sure, do a colored embossing. Let's see, what kind of colors could go with this? We have, we have the golden gourd, which actually would really go. It's like that darker color that's kind of like on her scarf. So we could do that one. What other colors? Let's see. I mean, I have my gold. I have um, a dark brown, which is coffee ground. But I'm really thinking that golden gourd would look really good. Let me try that then. So let's go golden gourd. If I'm not mistaken, that was the that was the October. Um, the October color for um, Brutus Monroe, their embossing powder club. So every month it's a new color and that was their October color. Which actually would be really, really, really cute because it's a great sort of orange, it's gold. So I think that'll look really good. Do any of you have the golden gourd? Have you been playing with it? So let's stamp that out and I think I'm going to stamp it a few times. It is gorgeous. Yes, I agree. Let's see here. Now the nice thing about this embossing ink from Brutus Monroe is it's oil based. So it's not as sticky as some of the other ones. Um, like. I mean, it is sticky. It's going to hold your embossing ink, but it's not going to dry on you. So you can go ahead and stamp all these out. You don't have to worry about it drying because it's actually never going to dry until you hit it with a heat tool. So it's actually really handy. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear you're in the embossing powder club. It's amazing. I, I think my favorite color so far is the Emerald City. That's the green one that has that gold... The gold specks in it. Oh, it's so gorgeous. You just have Raven. Well, that's a good one to start with. Everyone needs just a basic black embossing powder. I would say if you're slowly building your stash, um, Raven's definitely the one to start with. But if you wanted to add to that, you could go with the alabaster, which is the white and the clear. Those are some of the basic ones. And then I'd say go to the metallics, so Gilded, Penny, any of those. Um, but all of the embossing powders, really, you can't go wrong with. So let's sprinkle some of this on here and see how it looks. Look at that. I'm loving it already. Too cute. You're welcome, Madonna. 
uh, embossing is so much fun. I think it's honestly what got me started in crafting um, to begin with because I just remember watching it melt and thinking it was magic. And I know I've told this to many people many times, but I still think it's magic. Oh, you purchased the Christmas and the Hanukkah sets. That is so fun. You'll have to show us what you do with it because those both looked amazing. And I can tell you that the next embossing powder coming up is really fantastic as well for the embossing powder club. Um, I can't show you guys, but I have it. So I've been playing with it and it's really fun. <laughs> So let's go ahead and emboss this. Yeah, Lisa, a hint. I wish I could give you guys a hint. I wish I could kind of give you guys a sneak peek, but I'm not going to. So you're just going to have to wait. Hey, Daniel, thanks for joining. Yes, you are late to the party, so shame on you. <laughs> but don't worry, because we have a lot of crafting left to do. I am taking your um, suggestion and trying to sort of a fall thing, thank you kind of card, maybe? But you said a Thanksgiving centerpiece. So... Are you thinking like, um, like place cards or something? Cause I just went to my default, which is a thank you card. <laughs> so we can always do more later if you guys want to stick around or if my kids are still sleeping, which I think they're both sleeping. So that's good. All right. Let me, um, go ahead and emboss this the other way, but I am loving these colors. I mean, it's not your traditional fall like you would think of like orange and stuff but the purple and the mustard yeah it looks like a tablecloth doesn't it I would totally do this tablecloth for fall I think I'm really into the plum as a fall color so let's go ahead and just stamp these stripes out the other way and I forgot to um, hit it with my little embossing bag here but I think we'll be okay so I'm going to move this down again and stamp it out. Um, this um, background stamp is from Concord and Ninth. And then with our little um, image here that we colored, this is, um, this is a stamp set from the Greeting Farm. And Simon Says Stamp. This is their Pumpkin Spice It Up set. And that was from last year's Stamp Timber. Um, but I still love it. So I thought I'd pull that one out to play with this time. What about using the espresso this time? Sorry, guys. Thank you for telling me. Um, I was just stamping it out. And I totally didn't notice that I was gone. Hopefully, I didn't lose anybody. <laughs> I don't think I was gone for all that much. Um, let me stamp this out again. I don't see that line. Am I back? Can you guys hear me? Okay. Like I said, I think I feel like I have to count on YouTube cutting me off at least two or three times. I don't see it's doing it again. I see it buffering, but on my camera, can you guys hear me? Okay, I'm back now. Man, I don't know what YouTube's up to, but they gotta get it together. Okay, so here comes the coffee grounds. Let's see what this brown looks like. All right, I'm getting some stray powder hanging on there, but don't worry, we'll brush that away.
All right. Oh, good. So you guys are still here. Yay! I need my crafty friends to talk to while I'm making something. So much more fun to craft with friends. Okay, so let me just kind of clean up this. Um, actually, most of that powder kind of came off, but I'll just clean it up a little bit. Wipe that away so I don't emboss my craft mat. I'm just gonna kind of clean up these little edges. All right, but I don't, there's not too much stray hanging on. So we'll go ahead and emboss. Yeah, I love to watch the live videos too, Heidi. I've really been enjoying um, all my friends going live lately. And um, I I know when I go live here in the afternoons is kind of an odd time, but it's really the only time that works for me because it's my kids' nap time. And that's only when I'm really kind of guaranteed a, an amount of time where I can come on here and craft with you guys without and interruptions but anyway so i am loving this background look at that golden gourd on and the ground coffee there with plum so cute so now we just have to figure out what else do we want to do with our um fall fall girl here let's see i feel like it needs to say thank you because you know it's a fall thank you kind of card or you guys, I am getting so sick of this YouTube kicking me off. I'm so sorry. <laughs> am I back? Okay. Something's happening. Okay. I think I'm back. All right. So maybe we'll do thankful for you or pumpkin spice it up. I feel like she needs like, what can we put behind her? Should we do it that way or should we do it this way? You know what we can do? I don't really want to cover up the whole background, but maybe if we just kind of cut a little something. Like this isn't for this card, but I stamped that out as well. We could put like a little heart behind her. Maybe that heart's not quite big enough. We'll see. What can we find? Maybe I should cut a little bit of vellum out to layer behind her. Hmm. So that it kind of, I think I like that idea. Let's do some vellum. I have to find my vellum. I'm gonna cover up the whole background because it's so gorgeous, but I do want her to kind of stand out and not get lost in it. So maybe if we just layer like a small square of vellum, pop her up on that, put a sentiment there and add a few sequins, like we could totally call this a card. Let me make sure I can just kind of get this straight and measure out where I want to cut it. I don't do like specific dimensions. I kind of just layer it on there and mark with a pencil and then do it that way. So I'm normally like a clean and simple card kind of person. I like a lot of white space and um, uh, so this is like busier kind of background than I usually do, but I really love it. Yeah, I think she needs the vellum behind her just so she doesn't get lost. But I mean, look at this. I mean, this girl is coordinated with her background, so she's got style. So I'm going to emboss a little sentiment here on my vellum. 
And how about pumpkin spice it up? I kind of really like that one. And I feel like it needs to be embossed in that um, golden gourd. Because it, cause it's literally, I feel like the golden gourd is like the color that pumpkin spice is. I still have my leaf on here. See that? So here's our golden gourd. Let's go ahead and stamp. Gotta make sure I get it on there straight. Let's pumpkin spice it up. Now I keep looking over at my screen to make sure I'm not like buffering or <laughs> YouTube didn't kick me off or something. All right, and then we'll add our golden gourd. Look how cute that is. Adorable. Okay, brush away the extras and we'll just go ahead and hit that with our heat tool. See how quick and easy that melts um, once your heat tool is already heated up. That's amazing. All right, so there's our sentiment. How cute is that? I just love this color. So I think we can layer that on top here. Our pumpkin spice it up. And I think I'm gonna pop her up on some foam adhesive. So um, let's see. I'm gonna add here her down first. That way I'll know where I can hide some of my adhesive behind the vellum because that's always something tricky when you're working with vellum is knowing where to hide your adhesive. So I am grabbing my big mama roll of Brutus Monroe foam tape. I'm just going to rip off a piece here and maybe I can cut a few pieces down. If you cut it really fast with some nonstick scissors, um, it won't stick to your scissors. So you really have to I get it down in this area where it's really sharp. And then I just ah, see that one didn't work. But if you cut it really fast, that kind of helps it to cut without it sticking. So let's do this. This one's a little can I kind of wiggle that one in there. All right. Thank you guys all for just joining me today. It just makes it so much more fun to have someone to talk to while crafting. Let's see if I can get all the backers off of here. Was it tonight that Christopher was gonna do his 31 bags party and show us all of those bags that he's got? Um, the craft ones, I'm really interested to see the craft storage bags because that something I might be interested in. Oh, you know what else I was going to do to this image just to kind of make it pop a little bit. So her glasses didn't totally um, stamp. So what you can do is you can take like a little precision pen or something and just kind of color it in. So I'm going to color in her glasses a little bit and make them a little bit darker black. I'm going to try to do this without it really looking weird or without me <laughs> messing up this image. So I'm just going to go on her whole glasses and maybe even on her eyes a little bit because one of her eyes kind of smeared. The other fun thing you can do with glasses is if you have glossy accents, just add a little layer and it looks like, um, looks like lenses, but you definitely want to do that last. Otherwise you're going to smear glossy accents all over the place. I'm just kind of trying to fill in that side's not too bad because I already went over it with all the Copic colors and I'm just going to kind of fix her eye a little here. Yeah, 
Here we go. And if you really want your eyes to pop on your colored images, grab a white gel pen. If you don't have a white gel pen in your stash, you should get one. Because if you like to Copic color, you can add little details or um, you can add little details to stamped images or anything really. Um, and if you would like to have your eyes on your images pop, just add a little bit of white so they look bright and ready to go. So there's our, our pumpkin spice it up chick. Now I know where I can add my adhesive to the back. So I will really love this Zig pen. This is um, my pen adhesive. You just squeeze and kind of push down and it puts out just a tiny drop of glue and then you can just add it um, to really small die cuts or you can add it behind your embossed sentiment and then you can um, just add here it down. And even if you, if it dries before you um, adhere it down, it dries tacky. So you still have time to kind of get things positioned where they need to go. And I'm gonna put a few little dots on each corner. Um, they might kind of show a little bit, but it's gonna help adhere this down. And then just put a little bit of my ATG adhesive behind our image. Whoops. You know what, guys? I just refilled this. And the adhesive that I put in here, I think they changed it because it's really stretchy now when it never used to be. So it doesn't, like, break off as easy as it used to. So I don't know what's going on with that, but weird. So I'm going to try to get this lined up on the front. Make sure it's straight and just kind of hold it down a little bit. I feel like my sunlight kind of went away. Can you guys see all right? Maybe I'll open my blinds a little bit. Maybe that'll help. All right. How cute is that? I still have some of that adhesive on the back. Look at that. So cute. And then I have a card base here, but it's gray. So let's go with white so it matches. Here's a card base that I have already on hand. I'm not like one of them super organized people that kind of go ahead and cut all their card bases, <laughs> front panels and card bases, and that they can just grab one. I just, I'm not that organized. I sit down to craft and I just kind of do it on the fly. Kind of a little crooked, probably because it was cut crooked. All right. There we go. And then we can just layer on the front here. Should we adhere it down or should we pop it up a little bit? I have some craft foam. Where's my craft foam? Do I have a color that would coordinate? here. Let's pop it up a little bit. I have some purple, so I, I should just get plain white, but I have some of this um, laying around that I use for kids crafts, so I'm just going to use this up before I go buy any more. So I try to grab a color that coordinates um, so it doesn't look too weird in the back if somebody sees it. But it the foam, the craft foam, looks and um, works really great if you kind of want to pop up your front panel because you don't have to use an insane amount of foam adhesive because we all know that that's not cheap stuff and um, it gives you an even even um, support in the background so let's go put this little piece on so if you're sending something through the mail and you want to make sure it's not going to get all warped. Uh, the craft foam is actually a really good option. Thank you, Madonna. I'm glad you love it. I'm loving this too. Okay. Throw 
away those little bits. I just moved my garbage um, from where it used to be and so now I'm just kind of randomly <laughs> throwing things on the floor and then I realized, oh, my garbage isn't there anymore. That's why I can never rearrange anything in my craft room because even if it's put where it's supposed to be, I can't remember because I'm just go back to where it was. So don't ever clean or rearrange, right? Okay. Yeah, this um this tape is not working like it used to. I don't know if I really like it. I'm just gonna stick that down. Look at that. Too cute. So there's our little pumpkin spice it up card. And I feel like she needs some sequins. So let's grab the sequin. My sequin collection is not as big as Jess's, so um, sorry to disappoint everyone, but here's my little sequin box. So I have some purple ones. I've got some Brutus Monroe bottle cap ones. Um, I have some different ones like Dress My Craft and Kindred Stamps. I feel like, what do these purple ones look like? Is that too purple? Or do you think that that looks good? Kind of cute, right? Purple. Maybe we'll put a few purple on there and then I'll grab a few um, clear ones. These are actually sort of a pink. So that kind of coordinates. How's that look? Just a few little sequins to kind of give a little bit of bling. it looks good. So I'll go ahead and tear those down. And I think that finishes the card. So I don't know if this is what Daniel actually had in mind when he said a fall centerpiece card or um, something. Um, I mean, you could put this on the middle of your table for Thanksgiving, right? You could just make some cards. Actually, that would be kind of a fun idea is just make a bunch of thank you cards um, set them on the table and people could write out a thank you note to, um, anybody else. Like, thank you for making the green bean casserole. It was delicious, you know, <laughs> or they could just take a few home. That might be a good idea. A little fun thing for Thanksgiving. All right. I think that finishes the card. So thank you guys so much for stopping by. I'm glad you gave me those suggestions. I would have never have thought to put the two different embossing powders um, together. I totally would have just embossed all the stripes the same color. So yeah. Oh, the pumpkin that I colored. Put that inside. That's actually a really cute idea. I was thinking about using that pumpkin and then um, I got distracted by the sequins. So let's cu cut him out. Actually, I didn't color this stem. Let me quickly color the stem. I'm just going to do a little brown. Because I think green would be a little bit off. Because I don't have green anywhere else in my card. Let's cut that out. So I'll go ahead and adhere this guy to the inside and then I think we'll be done. But um, I'm glad you guys stopped in to do a little bit of live with me. Um, it's really fun. I try to get on here live as often as I can, but um, you know, sometimes it's a little bit difficult. But if there's anything you want to see me create with, um, just shout it out. I'd love to just kind of um, show you guys any of my supplies, any of the Brutus Monroe stuff that I might have, or anything, really. I mean, just let me know. You're welcome, Madonna. Yeah, thanks. It's so much fun to have you guys stop by and just chat and see what you're up to. I hope you guys have a great day. Um, let's see. 
that's why it's upside down. I'm like, why is this not sticking in there? I have to put my stamps back before I clean up, otherwise I'm totally gonna forget about it. So let's go ahead and just stick this little guy right here. How's that look? That'll be cute. Yikes. My neighbor's banging around out there. Hope you guys <laughs> didn't get scared because something's happening next door. I always feel a little bit awkward because my window looks right out at the backyard of my neighbors. So I'm, I'm never quite sure if they can hear me or not. I don't know if they just think I'm in here talking to myself. Um, yeah, so awkward. There we go. There's the little pumpkin inside. And I think that finishes our card. So thank you guys for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. Never be scared to send me a message or, um, you know, on Instagram or Facebook or anything. Um, I love to hear from you guys. And if you ever think of anything you want me to show on a live video or an edited video or anything, just let me know because I love crafting with everybody. So have a great day. I got to go get the kids up from nap because my son's waking up and I'll catch you everybody again later. So thanks. Bye.